We're approaching the three-week mark out here in the North Atlantic, and these glossy azure waters means we're struggling with no wind, and it's tempting us to jump in. After it already being a slow passage, a day of no wind can be frustrating. But because it's calm and feeling as if we're at anchor, we're going to look at it in a different light. Because we're motoring, we're doing some chores. Travis just serviced our winch over there. Yeah, this one was starting to bind up and it was like this silly little plastic piece. So I modified it. Hopefully it's good, but it sounds and feels a lot better. And then I serviced our main sheet winches, or one of them in belt bat, and I missed this one. So I did the other side, so now I gotta do this side. And then while he was doing that, I just did a load of laundry, because it's sunny. I don't even know if you can hear me with this loud engine on. Our whole day is spent motoring, which was quite comfortable. These big rollers, though, did deter us from jumping in for a quick dip. We know we're getting really close to the Caribbean now that we're seeing large blankets of sargassum. And as we passed one patch, the reel went off, hooking another mahi-mahi that we released. We've got our eye on tuna or wahoo. And that leads us to the end of day 20. <laughs> Today officially marks our longest passage yet. Our only other longest was 19 days from St. Martin to the Azores. And it's the 20th today, so it's our longest passage. And we're still nowhere close. We still got 700 nautical miles to go. Ha! It's crazy. And you know, we got no wind today till, well, we had no wind today, and we're gonna have no wind till, I don't know maybe for lucky early this morning and then we can start sailing but it's light and then the winds fill in for a couple days but then we lose the wind again in on the sixth day so oh man if we don't get there in six days we're gonna be in no wind again it's, it'll be ridiculous um, yeah hopefully we can get there in six days which I doubt it <laughs> On our average, we averaged 80 miles yesterday. Um, probably only going to average maybe 90 today. So our, our odds are slim. We're going to have to average like seven knots for the next two days when the wind comes in. And then maybe we'll make it in six days. Ugh. Or we'll, we'll end up rolling in at like, I don't know, two in the morning, four in the morning. But... That's just the way it goes out here, I guess. It's good. Today was good. We did a bunch of projects, a little tweaked a little things here and there. Cleaned up, uh, refurbished the winches, changed the furling line and how that all works. Yeah, just a couple little things, but you know, it's comfortable. At least we're able to sleep, you know, when we're kind of motoring. We're only motoring at 15 to 1600 RPM, so. It is, it's not as rackety, it's kind of like a nice mellow hum. Um, so it's easy to sleep, it just gets a little warm, especially if it rains, we have to close the hatches. Yeah, and that, it's been just super pretty. This is a beautiful sunset. We're motoring into the night with the roar of the diesel engine serenading us to sleep and through our watches. Day 21, officially three weeks in, and we are moving this morning, doing upwards of eight knots. So as you can see, the sun is barely just coming out around 10 in the morning. So I know that a few days ago, I did say that we have been trying our best to keep the same schedule that we've been on since we left the Canaries. It was a different time zone ago. 
But I think because we've been out here for so much longer now, as each day passes, it's been a little bit harder to keep the same schedule and routine. For example, making dinner at 6, 6.30 just seems too early because it's probably actually only four o'clock and it's heat of the day, it feels like. It's super hot, super bright, and it just doesn't feel like dinner time, nor do we want to be cooking in that temperature. We pretty much just want to lay in the heat of the day and just be comfortable. But yeah, going to bed at eight o'clock also just seems too early. So we have moved our schedule like shifted down two to three hours. So by the time I'm done my night watch and Travis wakes up, we're at about noon. And that's okay because we technically left the Canaries at noon. So when we kind of start our day together at noon, then we can kind of say it's a brand new day officially instead of, you know, starting early in the morning and saying it's technically only a half day or whatever. So yeah, it just makes it a lot easier for us to crunch numbers and get an idea of what we've done in the last 24 hours first thing when we start our day. Well, we ran the spinnaker through the night. That's always not an easy feeling just because uh, we know we've been in some squalls and I don't know what I'd do if we were in a squall. <laughs> With the spinnaker up, it'd be a fun challenge, but still flying it right now. But the seas are getting a little bit rolly, so it's jumping left and right. Now I'm just thinking if we're going to take it down, put wing on wing up, maybe that'll stabilize the boat a little bit. All right, because it's not comfortable, we're going to first try to... Oh, yeah. Yeah, when our asymmetrical spinnaker starts looking like symmetrical spinnaker. I think we've got to make some adjustments. Okay, so we're going to douse the spinnaker and then we're going to put up the mainsail and the headsail in the hope that we have a little bit more stability through these really short and messy waves. And when we say short, we don't mean the height of the waves. We mean the distance between each wave is short. So it becomes a lot less comfortable for us to go through and then we have the occasional big swell which just kind of sends us over one side or the other so hopefully that changes after we uh change our sails here okay scratch that we're actually going to try jibing the spinnaker first and seeing if that's more comfortable and if not we'll put up the uh main and head sail okay already doused it and now we're about to let it out the other side. Okay. But this isn't the same heading. It's very yeah, comfortable yeah. now, but it's not the heading we want to go because right now we're heading more south and we need to head more west. Let's hope it's comfortable. Yeah, we want our course over ground to be 260 to 270, and right now we're at. No, it's 260. 260? If we can hold the direct course all the way. Okay, so 260 is what we want. So we're heading right now is 220 and our course over ground is anywhere from 220 to 230. Alrighty. Let's see how this feels. What are you doing? So what I like to do is we'll try to put the wind at a 120 apparent and then we'll raise the spinnaker and then if that's not our heading obviously I'll gradually try to get closer and closer to a heading as we aim more downwind. So we're going to try to get closer and closer to point at 260? Yeah, but i got to see where the wave's established and I try to keep the wave so it only makes the boat heel one way. Because once it starts to heel both ways, the spinnaker just runs back and forth across the front of the boat and it just wreaks havoc. So I see how far we can push it before the wave starts to flick us over. Instead of just 
like aggressively changing us back on course, like suddenly. Yeah, because even though the spinnaker should be able to go to a 170 on a reach, which is really deep downwind, but if the wave affects that at all too much, then I don't like to do that, and I'd like to rather be around 130. Well, I feel comfortable there. We're, we're going to only be a, a course of a ground of 228, but that's okay. We have we can make a day almost straight south before jive more on course. We'll still have the wind in our favor. Which is a little bit more northwest. Yeah. It's not as jerky and sudden of a pulling motion. Oh, it's significantly smoother, and we're still doing six plus six knots. So. Yeah. yeah. Much smoother, still doing six knots. <laughs> yeah. So I am very glad that we're a lot more comfortable with just jibing and keeping the spinnaker up because if we had to put up the mainsail and the headsail, that would be much more work involved, especially going downwind, putting up our mainsail would be a lot more difficult because there's a lot of friction. Our webbing on the top here that attaches the slug to the very top of the sail, it came off, so I have to jump up here and do some sewing. This is my condition. I gotta climb up there. After getting that all sorted, we're able to hoist the mainsail and the headsail to take us into the rest of the night. Landfall is so close we can almost taste it. 
Thanks for tuning in and hit the subscribe button to join us when we finally drop the hook in the tropical turquoise waters of the Caribbean.